In the last video, we did some calculations for the torus. So now we're going to go through uh, similar calculations for the Klein bottle so you can see how this works uh, when we have a non orientable surface. So just like before, um, we're going to pick a starting point and we're going to represent this as a word. Again, our word is AB. AB. And this time, the first A, the first B are both clockwise orientation, but the second A um, is not clockwise orientation, and the second B is clockwise orientation. So the only letter we're going to put an inverse on is our second A. So again, um, we have one word, so we're looking at one face. Right, so one word, one polygon, one face. We have two different letters, so we're looking at two edges, right? Because regardless of their orientation, um, both of the A's are getting glued together and both of the B's are getting glued together. Um, and if we label our vertices, A uh, starts with point P, so this is also point P, and B um, both starts from and points toward point P. Um, so just like before, all of our vertices are the same vertex, so one vertex. So we can compute our Euler characteristic um, by looking at the number of vertices minus the number of edges plus the number of faces. So here, 1 minus 2 plus 1. Again, we're looking at an Euler characteristic of 0. All right, so now I still have no boundary components because I don't have any edges that um, don't get glued to another edge. So, because I have no boundary components, just make a little note of that. No boundary components. Right, that's our, our B equals zero. And now uh, we have to look at how these edges are going to get glued together. So, when I glue my A edges together, um, I don't have to put any twists in, but notice in order to glue my B's together with the proper orientation, I have to put a twist into the surface. So whether you have one twist, two twists, three twists, no matter how many twists you have to put in, um, if you put in at least one, we have a non-orientable surface. So because we have a twist, that tells us that our surface is going to be non-orientable. And so the formula that we're going to use to determine the genus is that the Euler characteristic is equal to 2 minus g minus b. Remember, for orientable surfaces, it was 2 minus 2g minus b. So that's the, the term that's different is that g rather than 2g. All right, so Euler characteristic is zero. Number of boundary components um, is zero. So we can see here that our genus is two. So we have a non-orientable surface of genus two with uh, zero boundary components. Squeeze that in there. And so remember, if it's a non-orientable surface, genus 2 means that this is equivalent to a sphere with two cross caps. So each... Uh, number in the genus is either handles or cross caps depending on orient orientability 
Uh, so two cross caps and no holes, right? Um, boundary components are holes. We'll look at one um, with holes in our ne next example. Okay, so we've got a sphere with two cross caps and no holes. All right, well, if I were to just interpret this um, as stated there, um, we'd be looking at um, something kind of silly like this. So there's my sphere. Oh, well, that's kind of a funky sphere. Anyway. Sometimes these are kind of fun to draw because they can look really silly depending on how you draw them. I always think this kind of looks sort of like a frog. All right, but we said this was a Klein bottle, um, and it is. So it turns out that depending on kind of the order that you glue things and um, that sort of thing, that um, the sphere with two cross caps really is homeomorphic to a Klein bottle. And that might seem kind of crazy, uh, but it's true. So um, special name for a non-orientable surface of genus two without boundary components is our, whoops, is our Klein bottle.